Hello and welcome to Card Games That Don't Suck. Today we're going to be looking at Egyptian Rat Screw, a variant of Snap that has such an insane pace and number of rules that you're bound to get them wrong and that's why it's so much fun. Yes, before we get into the rules we should very much stress that you're not going to be able to follow all the rules in this video and that's the point? Yeah, it's the only card game where not knowing the rules is part of knowing the rules. Okay, great. It bases itself on a game called Beggar My Neighbour, sometimes known as Beat Your Neighbour Out of Doors or Strip Jack Naked, neither of which happen during Beggar My Neighbour. Okay. So, in Beggar My Neighbour, very simply, much like in Snap, you take turns dealing cards at the top of your deck. So we've got a sort of three-player game going here. That's right, yes. So, until someone deals either a picture card or a face card, a jack, queen or king, or an ace. In that instance, so Quinns has dealt an ace, I would then have to pay Quinns four cards because he's played an ace. It'd be three if it's a king, two if it's a queen, one if it's a jack. Okay. So i then deal another four cards, and once I've dealt them, Quinns has won all those, he takes them to the bottom of the deck and he wins those cards. So the way you win Beggar My Neighbour is by getting all the cards off your opponents and the person with all the cards at the end of the game wins. Okay. There's not really a huge amount of gameplay with Beggar My Neighbour, it's just looking at a series of cards. Yeah, I mean, some would say it's entirely predetermined. Yeah, some would accurately say that, okay. yes. So what Egyptian Rat Screw does is it takes the same mechanics of Beggar My Neighbour, dealing cards and paying each other, and adds various slapping mechanics, which I'm going to show you with these cards. So, much like in Snap, if you play a matching pair, so say you've got two nines, okay, that's so, a slap. So if, this part, if you dealt a nine and then this player also dealt a nine. Sorry, that's absolutely correct. So you take turns dealing cards, okay. and yeah, so let's say player one deals a nine, player two deals a nine, that's a matching pair, and we slap for it. Whoever slaps fastest gets the cards. I have to, I can only apologise for my gummy hands. It's about time. <laughs> um, so that's how that works. Secondly, I'm going to need... Uh, oh, no, no, you um, need your cards back. Okay. I know you won them, but... I, they're <laughs> okay. mine now. Okay, so the second way you can get a slap is by having what we call a sandwich. So let's say we have a nine, and then the next player plays an eight, and then the next player plays a nine. Now we have a matching pair with a single card in the middle. That's a slap. If there's more than one card in the middle, it doesn't count. Okay. The next variant you have on this is what you call a top and bottom. So let's say the very first card played of the entire round is a nine. Then several other cards get dealt out until someone else plays a nine. Now at this point, the top and bottom card of the entire stack match. They're both nines. Oh, you're joking. So <laughs> irrespective of how many cards have been played, that can be slapped because it now matches. But of course it won't look like this, will it? It'll look like that. And then when a player slaps it, they'll have to go, it was because the first card was a nine? That's exactly it. Okay. But they also have to keep track of what the previous card was and the previous card before that in case... It's a sandwich. Case a sandwich. Right. Okay, easy, easy. E easy. But, then we add some other mechanics. So, the next one we add is what we call tens, which means if two cards, any two cards, are played back to back and add up to ten, for which purposes aces count as one, that would be a slap. <laughs> so, a seven and a three is a slap. Picture cards have a value of naught, but if there is a single picture card between them, that also counts as a ten. So, seven, king, three would count as a ten, and that can be slapped. Wow. Okay. But if there's a king on the bottom, then that would be slapped earlier. Because it would be tops yeah. and bottoms. Or if there's a seven, yeah. You can see you can see how these stack up pretty quickly. The next one we have is four in a row. That's pretty straightforward. It's a six, seven, eight, nine. Basically four cards in ascending or descending order. They can go through the ace as well, so you can have queen, king, ace, two. For okay, instance. Okay. Those can be slapped. Thank you for demonstrating. And lastly, you have what we call marriage, where if a king and a queen... Where do I have a queen? Have you got any queens? Uh, you can picture a queen. Let's say this jack is a queen. Oh, I found a queen. I found a queen, perfect. If you have a queen and a king played in either order, that's a marriage and that can be slapped. Hang on, hang on. You just wanted to win that, didn't I, you? No, I just wanted to slap. Yeah, slapping is I fun. I'm excited, yeah. So, uh, this isn't a game that conforms to heteronormative ideals. If you have a king followed by a king or a queen followed by a queen, you can slap that as well. Oh, it's because they're pairs. because yeah, they're pairs. You can slap that all day. It, it, it's very equal slapping. Yeah. So. Those are all the ways you can slap, but there are also a couple of variants. You can add jokers in. Jokers can do one of two things. Either they can be played as an additional card to pay with. So instead of paying three or four with queens, with kings or aces, you'd pay five to a joker. Okay. Or a joker can just be something you always slap. So irrespective of when the joker's played, everybody slaps. <laughs> there is one final variant of slapping. So let's say you have a pair that goes down. And that time, me and Quinns are not being particularly astute. And we just, one of us quickly plays the next card. If it's a three of a kind, in this case, three nines, whoever slaps that first instantly wins the game. There's... The, there's no more Egyptian rat screw. It's just over. That's it. So they, if they've got one card left and someone else has all the other cards, 
they would win the game. Wow. Okay. Unless, unless it's 666, which is the forbidden number. So if there's three sixes played and someone slaps them, not only do they instantly lose, not only does everyone playing instantly lose, the rules state the deck must be burned that night at midnight. Okay. So That's my favourite rule in any card game I've ever heard of. Yeah, it's pretty extreme in terms of penalties. And speaking of penalties, let's talk about what happens if you get something wrong, which you will because the rules are ridiculous. So let's say, for instance, we get a nine and a queen. There's no reason to slap, but Quinn's is excitedly slapped down regardless. In this case, Quinn's would take the top two cards off his deck. Oh, top two. Top two, and put them uh, on the bottom secretly of this, which means we don't know what the bottom card is in terms of tops and bottoms. It also means there's more cards to win and Quinn's has lost some cards. Likewise, let's say uh, I slapped and Quinn said, I don't think you slapped legitimately there. What we do is then check to see whether it was legitimate or not. One of two things will happen. If Quinn's has correctly caught me cheating and slapping incorrectly, I would take the top card and give it to Quinn's. It goes on the bottom of his deck and I'd pay the two card penalty. Or if Quince was wrong and I was actually in the right, he'd give me a card and it'd go off the top of his deck onto the bottom of my deck. Oh gosh, so the hierarchy is if you slap and then everyone goes, and then you just go, oh no, then you're going to pay a penalty. But if you slap and feel confident and go to take the cards, then someone else says, I don't think that was correct. That's right. And then they can, there's an additional penalty there. That's right. So you not only have to remember all the cards have been played in what order and also make sure you're following the rules of Beggar My Neighbor, you also have to make sure everyone else is doing it to make sure they're not cheating. Okay, you have to slap while also being the slap police. Yes, okay. the slap police is very much what this game this is about. This is a piece of cake. This is probably a good time to stress that you're not supposed to fully remember or even be able to play well. No, right. and in what we found is what will happen very quickly is you'll be so busy looking for sandwiches that someone else will just go, oh, there was a 10 on the bottom of the deck, I'm going to slap that. Yeah. But let's say you've got someone who is constantly ready, their hand is always just there like, ready to slap. So yeah, what you can do is if you think that that's not something slappable, you can force their hand down and that will count as them having incorrectly slapped and they'll pay the slapping penalty. Okay, so that's how you police people keeping their hands too yeah, close to the Yeah, if they're just doing this, then yeah, you can force them and then they're going to pay the price. Mm. Oh, additional slapping etiquette. Should we talk about how you peel cards off your deck? Absolutely. So if you've not played Snap recently, peeling towards yourself is bad etiquette because you're seeing the card first. So you peel away from yourself so mm. everyone else sees first, which means, again, the slap police follow the slap law. You I get think a sandwich. A sandwich. No! no! It's, too, too it's hard even to play as an example. Yeah. So the way you win is by getting all the cards. If you lose all your cards at any point, you are effectively eliminated, but you can still slap in. So even though you don't have any cards to deal, if you see something you can slap in, you can slap in at. Once someone has got all the cards, they deal three more cards. If no one else can slap in on that, that player wins the game. Mm. And that's, that is Egyptian rat screw. What happens if I've got no cards and I slap incorrectly and can't pay the penalty? You're eliminated from the game permanently. Oh. Also, if you slap incorrectly three times in a row, regardless of how many cards you've got, you're eliminated permanently. Is this the meanest game that we've ever covered? It's certainly the most painful. One thing I'll say is a couple of things to consider. One, don't slap too hard unless you want to get slapped hard, because if you get a reputation as a hard slapper, oh baby, you're going to get slapped hard. Secondly, <laughs> don't wear any jewellery or watches or bracelets because you'll just end up with broken fingers. Thirdly, make sure the table is fairly solid because it will take a pounding. And fourthly, if you're borrowing the deck of cards off someone, make sure you let them know they may be returned battered and or burned. I'm glad we've got a really stupid game in this series. I mean, just really stupid. It's, it's, it's very enjoyable watching people, someone covers it and someone goes, wait, why on earth did you cover that? And then they say, oh, well, it was because of this. It's, and then It's peculiar because there's like, what, six reasons you can slap. I find that when I play this, I can keep pretty much two of them in my head at yeah. any one point. And then the rest are just like, it's, it's not going to happen. Yeah, it's, it's like trying to pat your head and rub your stomach yeah, exactly. and play Egyptian <laughs> restaurant <laughs> at yeah. the same time. That's, that's how I feel about it. But also, just so much more fun. I found that when other people were slapping it, even when I was doing badly, unlike some board and card games like sort of Guy Splits or Dobble, I, in, I don't mind losing this. There's something about it that like when I see people slap, I just feel like my friends are clever rather than that I'm incompetent. Yeah, it's a game where everyone's stupid, so everyone feels clever. That's where I land with it. That's yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. it. Okay, well, thank you very much for teaching that. But hey, we've got, if, if you like feeling stupid, we are playing with a particularly unusual deck uh, this, this episode. What we have here is the Carte Rouge. This is by a company called the Enigma Emporium. And this deck 
is actually a puzzle. You'll notice that there's a lot of unusual text around people. Some of the royals have mysterious uh, patterns in their clothing. What could this mean? Well, this is a deck on Kickstarter that represents sort of something like the puzzle boxes that uh, some elements of YouTube are into. This is categorically not uh, within Shut Up and Sit Down's wheelhouse. We're often too stupid to even learn games, let alone decode something like this, which is like almost Sherlockian in its intelligence. But if you like puzzles and you like decks of cards, which I figure good chunk you might, then I think this was just a really cool idea. And then the Enigma Emporium do put out some pretty fun stuff. So that's on Kickstarter right now, and you'll find a link in the description of this video. As always with Shut Up and Stand, this is not sponsored content. There is no sponsored content. It's just us covering what we think is quite cool, which this episode includes this deck and Egyptian Rat Screw. Thank you very much, Ben. Thank you. This has been another card game that doesn't suck. This is like, uh, how would you even begin to figure out how to do this? I don't it, it might just be nonsense for a while. It might be nonsense! <laughs> we, we can make no promises, everybody. Thank you very much. <laughs>